I do wish that I had um, filmed the classes that I gave that were free on Facebook um, so that I could better break down what I've kind of been communicating all along. But one of the major pieces for me has been ancestral work. And again, most of us are born um, with our ancestors around us ready to help us. And, you know, earth, sky, past and future, that makes a lot of sense to me. Very indigenous principles, which I believe are also the principles of Islam. But again, I'm not a scholar of Islam. And I think that um, there are many of us here that were meant to bridge the gap between indigenous and Islam and um, society's viewpoints so that we could truly come together. But one of the things that um, has always connected me was music and my body's movement during music. And of course, now after being hit in the spine with a chair, it's not always so easy um, to move my body the way that I want to, um, which is really unfortunate for me because that's been like one of my major modes of expression my whole life. And then singing too. I always used to think I had my own languages because I would always just sing and whatever flowed out, I would let flow out. And now that I'm in my 30s, I'm realizing that some of them are languages. It's just languages that I didn't know my ancestors were speaking for me. So it's not something scary. Um, it's actually really beautiful and it makes me very connected with everything. So it's not um, anything to be feared. It's just they've walked with me this whole time period. And when I looked up at the stars, I never saw anything but ancestors and family. My whole life, even before I saw The Lion King in like, what was it, 1993 that it came out or something like that. So um, one of the other things is music, the way that you're dancing, the way you're moving your body, foods that you love to eat, checking out which region they're from um, has been really cool as well. And then also when you go into an antique store, I have some really amazing ones close to me. What are you drawn to? Um, I'm wearing a necklace that at a local um, antique store in Camden, I bought this, I believe in 2014 or 15 there. And I feel so connected to this and I love wearing it and it makes me feel connected to my ancestors. And it's the same um, with these earrings as well. And something else that has been really monumental for me during this time period is also um, artwork, sketching my ancestors, sketching what they looked like, um, feeling them with me in meditation, interacting with them. Um, it's all been very connecting for me, which trees, which spices, which foods, um, cooking kind of my ancestral foods, um, being connected to ancestral jewelry, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing when you start listening to your senses, what can occur. And again, during this time period, um, when I was starting to fully integrate myself and my ancestors and get ready to show myself to the world in a way that I had never been able to do before, um, and I was ready to like fully integrate all of the beautiful spiritual work I had done and ancestral work and um, healing work and that's when I got hit in the spine with a chair so it's really kind of conflicting in messages but also it's given me even more time to reflect and to explore and to understand and to see fully and to fully understand consciousness and creation and the universe and my role here and our role here and what the point and purpose is to life so Ancestors for me were a huge part of that connection. And again, it's come through dance, song, um, just like stream consciousness, which is when you just kind of flow improv, you could call it in singing. That's my favorite kind of singing and dance to do, which is when you just let your body flow or you let yourself sing words and they just flow out of you. Um, which jewelry you're connected to, which styles. Um, when you go to an antique store, there was this beautiful kimono that I was so drawn to uh, in 2021 when I went to an antique store and I was like, I feel so connected to my ancestors with that. Like, I, I wanted to purchase it so badly because I just felt so drawn to it, but I'm not in a financial position to be purchasing antique kimonos. <laughs> but there were these entire um, areas that just had these this artwork and this style and this clothing um, that I was really drawn to uh, and I felt incredibly connected to the jewelry um, and everything like that. So it's really important to note those things because for me the journey has been 
um, in me all along and with me all along as it's with all of us if you just remember. And then along the way, uh, different things that you learn when you're a kid, different cultures that you are intrigued by, um, mythologies that you're intrigued by, places of the earth that you're intrigued by, um, different connection that comes if you can visit those places, different connection that can come when you get outside in nature, um, the dance that you do, Art has been huge for me, like I said, my ancestors coming um, through art and me being able to draw them and see them randomly. Meditation has been huge my whole life, but this especially has been a really important time period where I've been shown quite a lot of things from my ancestors and made a lot of connections. And in some of the scariest moments of my life, um, I called upon my ancestors and everything else when I had no humans around me that I felt were uh, consciously aware of what I was going through and uh, protecting me. So my ancestors have walked with me my whole life, but this journey has been led by my ancestors and it's because they're leading me to a path and then that path is opened up and seen and then we remember that we are divine and that we rise when we die and that um, this earth has been led astray and that um, we cannot always force others to see how simple it would be to have a better world, which is really frustrating because it's so easy to see the world as one nation, as one people, as one um, human beings, you know, one nation. But it's not easy to convince everybody else of that or to not convince them, but help them remember, you know. So I recommend ancestral connection. And I don't, I don't believe you need uh, anyone to facilitate that for you. If you do have somebody that helps you, that's beautiful and wonderful, but also just making the intention alone is very powerful. And they will show up when you ask them to, and when you honor them, and when you're working with them, and they will communicate with you, and they will, they will be there for you when you feel alone in the world. Um, so, I just wanted to talk a little about that because again, I'm wearing uh, this jewelry that I bought at an antique store in Camden in like 2014 or 15. And um, one, I was really excited to be able to buy random things like this for myself. But also, um, you know, I long ago learned to budget quite a long time ago. Um, and um, that's how I traveled. I had to budget and work really hard in order to pay for those uh, trips that I learned and did my schooling in India and Thailand. Um, but these pieces are very meaningful to me and when I put them on, I can feel their power and I can feel them walking with me. There's a couple of other pieces I wear as well, um, but this was really the one that I wanted to kind of share and show uh, today and these earrings too. But make the intention and then listen because your ancestors will speak. 